Jesse here. You might know me, maybe, who knows. Maybe this is your first time, but I miss Jesse. This is Kidopolis, and this is Esme. Esme. She is my big girl, fourth grader. She is here because the month of September is our block party. That is the theme of the month, block party, and we need to know that everyone's invited, everyone. So this week, I invited Esme to help me out a little bit. Um, and she's going to help us demonstrate that friends encourage one another. We're going to demonstrate that in a way. And we're going to talk about how I should treat others the way that I want to be treated. So we're talking about like the nice things like um, just saying kind things to each other. We're talking about being helpful. We're going to help our friends because we want them to help us. We're also going to talk about some of the things that aren't that comfortable, like uh, a little bit of like discipline where maybe we're going to tell a friend, I don't think that was a very nice thing that you did. And we need to be open when they tell us that, right? Because if we're not acting nice, we're not acting like Jesus. So we need to be able to treat others with kindness, even when it's uncomfortable. And we need to remember that in all situations, okay? So, and I also want you to remember that if a friend does kind of call you out like that, that it's not a bad thing. It's actually showing love and because they want you to be like Jesus too. Okay, but that's not what we're gonna do right now. We're not. I'm not gonna call Esme out on how she needs to clean her room. So do I. It's fine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're gonna talk. We're gonna be nice to each other. All right. I just explained the game to Esme, but I'm gonna make sure that you guys know what's going on too, because I want you to try this at home with your parents, your brother, your sister, your grandma, your hamster, your hedgehog, your cat, your dog. Maybe call up um, your great uncle and play it with him. There's a lot of different opportunities for you to do this. If you want to give me a FaceTime or something like that and play it with me, that's great. But this is the compliment game. Um, it probably could use a little bit of work on the title in the in our little packet that we got from the company that designs our curriculum, that designs our lessons. They called it the bench game um, because it's like you're sitting on a bench and you're going to give each other compliments. We're not on a bench. We're just on chairs. But the chair game, anyways, I'm going on a tangent now. But... So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look each other in the eyes and we're gonna give each other compliments back and forth. Um, and yeah, you can't repeat, that's, that's the rule. You can't repeat any compliments. So if I start and I say, Esme, I love your eyes. I think your eyes are very pretty. She cannot say that. So that was my first compliment, you go. Um, Mommy, I love how you're always so understanding. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I think your freckles are adorable. I love your beautiful hair. I love my beautiful hair. I love that you were adventurous with your hair. With this blue color we put in. I love that you're always so loving. I'm so loving. Thank you. I like how helpful you are with your sisters. I like how you always like make dinner for us. <laughs> I like, <laughs> I'm stuck because I, my, the thing I want to say is I like how you help me out with your sisters by making dinner, but we both already kind of said that. Um, well, I love your tender heart when it comes to our pets. I love how you always give me compliments. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I like that you were willing to help me with Kidopolis today. I like you because you asked me to help you with get off this. <laughs> so you guys get the idea, right? Are you feeling are you feeling good? Are you feeling nice and loved? Do you feel encouraged? Good. All right, friends. So I hope you do that at home with somebody or you can call me and I'll do it with you because I love you and I miss you and I'm sure I'm going to win if we play uh, because I know I have a ton of compliments that I've been saving up the past six months for you. That's a little bit competitive of me. If you want to say that you love that I'm competitive, go ahead. Um, so we are going to, I'm going to excuse Esme in a minute and then call her back for, will you join me for prayer time? <laughs> we'll talk about it. Um, but I'm going to excuse her and then we're going to go over our Bible story. You're going to watch a so-and-so show. You'll see. You'll see. We'll be right back. All right. So it's just me right now. Esme is going to come back, but not now. First, we're going to go over um, a Bible story. And kind of a couple stories. We're going to talk about two people in the Bible. Um, and their stories are in 1 Kings and 2 Kings, which is in the 
Old Testament. That's right. <laughs> um, we are going to talk first about Elijah. E-L-I-J-A-H. Elijah. So uh, I usually don't spell out the names of the characters in our Bible, but today it's probably going to be helpful. Elijah was a prophet for the Lord, and his life was dedicated to doing things for God, right? And sometimes it wasn't always that easy. There was a lot of different um, gods with a little g, not a capital G like our God, that were being worshipped and um, altars were like built for them and people did not worship the one true God. They worshipped other gods and you know there's a lot of mess with that whole thing. So Elijah actually got pretty lonely and pretty frustrated which Raise your hand if you've ever been there, because I know that these past couple months have been feeling very lonely and um, frustrating. So, like, if you can see how Elijah felt, raise your hand. Okay, we all have our hands raised. So, <clears throat> Elijah, what did he do in this time of frustration and loneliness? Did he shake his fist? Uh, not really. Did he um, go and write a mean letter to somebody? No. Okay, here's what he did. And here's what you should do in these times of frustration. This is the best thing that you can do. He prayed. He prayed and he talked to God. And he said, this is in 1 Kings chapter 19. And this is verse 10. And again, I am in the NIV. So it might be a little different in your Bible. And that's okay. But uh, here's what mine says. <clears throat> Oh, well, first, uh, the Lord came to Elijah and said, what are you doing here? Chap er, verse 10, he replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. I've been working really hard. My heart's been like in it. You've been doing what you want, God. Kind of what he said. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. And remember, Elijah is a prophet. So, like, he's like, oh. Gosh, am I next? Lord, I'm working hard for you, but there's still prophets dying. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. So then the Lord says, I got it. That's not what he said. He said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. And there's a whole story here, and you can read it. Um, chapter 19 and 1 Kings. But what you need to know is that the Lord showed Elijah his new BFF, Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A. So we have Elijah with a J and Elisha with an S. So um, I looked it up so that we would know that Elijah means the Lord is my God and Yord is Yahweh, that kind of I think we've talked about it before. Yahweh is like the way, it's more of a symbol, I think, but that's how they just chose to pronounce it was Yahweh. I'm sure there's like a whole like lesson that Jeff teaches on this that's going to explain it a lot better. But just know that the E-L-L, -L, when that's in a name, it kind of refers to that Yahweh. And then we have Elisha, which means God is salvation, Okay. And if you're confused, Miss Jessie, who came first, Elijah or Elisha? If you know your alphabet, you are in luck. Because Elijah starts with a J, and J is before S, Elisha. So Elisha also has an S in it, and he came second. So that can help you remember that. And Elisha, when Elijah first saw him, he was in a field working. He was farming. He was doing his job, doing his thing with, I think, oxen. And Elijah came and he put a cloak on him and he was like, hey, come be my buddy. Come be my friend. And um, Elisha, what was his response? What would you do if like some random dude just came and put a cloak around you and said, hey, there's this really hard job that people are literally getting killed for. Come do it with me. <laughs> Pass. I'm going to hang out with these cows. I'm going to enjoy my cheeseburgers. Uh, because they weren't following the rules. They were probably eating cheeseburgers, which I think is against the rules, um, if they had cheeseburgers. Anyways, I, I don't know. I'd have a hard time with it, wouldn't you? Not Elisha, because the Lord had blessed him. He, Elisha knew that he had to go with this guy. 
And what he actually did was he went and kissed his mother and father goodbye. Great. Honor thy mother and thy father. Good job. Let them know. Don't let them worry. And then he took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people. And they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and become his attendant. So his life, which was probably pretty good, he had oxen, he was farming, and he had a mom and a dad that he loved. It's pretty good. But he made sure there was no way to go back to it, right? There was complete com commitment, not just walking away from the field, but burning the things that would keep him coming back. Pretty cool, right? So from there, Elijah and Elisha, they went on and they did their prophet thing. And there's so much in here that you could learn. And I'm sure Kellen from the So-and-So show is going to tell you about that too. So I'm going to save it for that. But what I want you to know is that these two friends worked together. They encouraged each other. They were there for each other when they needed it. Elisha came at just the right time for Elijah when he was getting frustrated and feeling alone. Apparently somebody thinks I'm feeling alone. Do you want to come join me? Um, and Elisha helped him do his work as a prophet. And something pretty darn cool happens to Elijah when he was all done and ready to go after some of the miracles that they performed. And after he blessed Elisha, um, he went out and suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them, Elijah and Elisha. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. How cool is that? He went up to heaven in a whirlwind. He did not die. He went to heaven. And there are only two people in the Bible who that happened to. Elijah. Not Jesus. I bet you were thinking Jesus. Not Elisha, but that would make sense. It's a different guy named Enoch. And he's a little bit earlier. But pretty cool that there was some... Somebody that God was like, I'm going to spare you the pain of death. And he did it in a really cool way. And Elijah never saw him after that is what it says. And he put the cloak on that Elijah had previously given him. And he went out and did some more prophet work. So <clears throat> just remember that friendships are important. Encourage your friends and treat them the way that you want it to be treated. Elijah gave him his cloak and he helped him out with his work as a prophet. And Elisha did that too. Yeah, is that cool? So, since you're here, do you want to help me? <laughs> Everyone's invited. All right, so repeat after me. Elijah. 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 Elisha. Okay, so let's Elijah. do it. Let's do it faster. Elijah. Elijah. Elisha. Elijah. Who came first? Elijah. And then who came, who was his buddy that he kind of trained up and went on and did amazing miracles after him? Elisha. And they're two different people, right? All right. So thank you for your help. And now they're going to go watch the so and so show. And I'm going to go get Etsy. Say bye. No, bye. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We're going to go get a cheese stick. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bud. D's. Buddies. Ch Ums. Chums. Ami. Goes. Amigos. P Owls. Pals. Fr Othy. Frothy. No, no, listen. Fructose. 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 Mm -mm. Fr. Ontogenesis. Frontogenesis. Why aren't you saying that? Sorry. Sorry. I, I'm, I'm with you this time. Okay. Okay, right. Mashed pate. Toes. Thanks for that. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the
the So and So Show. I'm John. He's Brandon. We're friends. That's correct. We know each other so well. We can finish each other's soup, taco soup. That is true. We both do like taco soup. You know what they say? Friends are friends for for as long as the money's rolling in. Some people do say that, but not us. Never. No, no, we are as close as two peas in a pod. Poncherello. Poncherello, that's 1970s motorcycle cop show of chips. Yeah, we know each other so well. Hey, can you guess what I'm going to say next? Of course. Please, Please welcome, welcome someone, someone who knows, knows stuff. stuff. All right. Woo. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. Yeah, please, sit down. I'm actually used to standing, if you don't mind. Oh, no, sure, we'll stand up too. Oh, uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, tell us who you are and what you know. <laughs> I'm Sally Joggins, and I'm a water volunteer for Marathon Runners. A water volunteer? That's right. When Marathon Runners are in the middle of the race, they can't just stop off at any watering fountain. That's where I come in. So, so you give water to runners as they run by? I don't just give out water. Anybody could do that. I assess the runner's approximate fatigue and dehydration levels, and then I quickly provide them with the amount of fluids they require to keep them in the race. Heads up, let's go, you're at the 16th mile mark, you're killing it. Are you at a, uh, are you at a marathon right now? I sure am. Oh cool, how many, how many races have you volunteered for? I volunteered for 278 marathons, half marathons, triathlons, and fun runs all over the US, the UK, and twice in Canada. Wow, that sounds like... You've got this. You're making great time. Let's go. Go, go, go. I love how you're trying to motivate the runners as they go by. Is that something that you always do? Absolutely. You know, after you run so many miles, your body starts to tell you, I don't want to run anymore. Give up, it says. Go take a nap. Oh, I've heard that voice. Right. So I'm over here trying to be the voice that says, you can do this. Keep going. I'm encouraging them. Well, that's pretty... Hey, it's up. Let's go. Yes, you've got this. Come on. You're almost there. Keep going. Help me out. Oh, uh, go. You you can do it. Yeah, run. Put, put the bottom of your feet on the ground repeatedly. Run. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the show, Sally. I feel more encouraged just having you here. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure we can keep going without you. Hey, don't you quit on me. You get out there, do the show, and finish strong. Do you hear me? I hear you. You've got this. You're the best person for the job. I am. Oh. <laughs> I am amazing. Mm. This is amazing. This is the best water I've ever had. Only the best for the best. Thanks. Now you get out there and you keep encouraging people right now. I always do. Go. Keep going. You're the best. Go, go, go. You're the best, Brandon. I know you are. I know. <laughs> It's Bible Story Time with Kellen. What up, guys? Hey, Kellen, you got a story for us? I do have a story for you. You can read it yourself in the books of First and Second Kings, or you can stick around and watch a little human head puppet theater. Around 3,000 years ago, God chose a man named Elijah to be one of his prophets. Hello, I am Elijah. I am a prophet of God. He reveals himself to me and relates what he requires. Elijah was waiting on the mountain when God revealed God spoke to Elijah. Elijah. Lord? Go to the desert of Damascus. Anoint Elisha as the next prophet after you. Lord, why are you whispering? Because I want you to listen. Oh, that makes sense. Go. So Elijah left the mountain like God told him to, and he found the man that would one day take his place, Elisha. Okay, these names are going to get confusing. Uh, do these help? They do! Thanks! While Elisha 
was out plowing in the field, Elijah went up and threw his coat around him, a symbol that Elisha had been chosen as the next prophet. Elisha! Oh, what? Here you are. Dude, what does this mean? You will one day take my place as prophet of God. Oh, far out. No, no. Right here. Righteous. Yes. Uh, I will follow you. Good. Let's go. Oh. So, Elisha became Elijah's servant. And for many years, Elisha followed Elijah everywhere. But then the time came for God to do something very special with Elijah. Elijah was going somewhere that Elisha couldn't follow. Elisha, oh. stay here. The Lord wants me to go to Bethel. Just as sure as you and the Lord are alive, I'm going to stay right by your side. <gasps> Dude, I rhymed. <laughs> so they went down to Bethel. In Bethel, some prophets asked Elisha if he knew that God was taking Elijah to heaven that day. Yeah, I know. Be quiet. Elisha, oh. stay here. The Lord wants me to go to Jericho. Jericho's the place where God's sending you. But sure as you're born, I'm going there too. Oh, dude, I rhymed again. Ah, what? So they went to Jericho. In Jericho, some more prophets asked Elisha if he was aware that God was taking Elijah to heaven that day. I know. What does everyone keep bringing that up? <sighs> Elisha, oh. stay here. Huh. The Lord wants me to go to the Jordan River. <gasps> if I've told you once, I've told you three times. If you're going someplace, I'm going to go there also. <sighs> I couldn't think of a rhyme. So they walked to the Jordan River. A group of 50 prophets followed them to the river and stopped nearby to watch what happened next. Whoa! What are we supposed to do now? Swim? Just watch and be amazed. Am I supposed to be amazed yet? I'm trying to take off my coat. Oh! You, you want me to help? No, no, oh. just... Just let Kellen do it. Oh, yeah. Will do. Elijah took off his coat, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. Whoa! <laughs> Tell me, after we walk through the river on dry land, what can I do for you before I'm taken away? Oh, please give me a double share of your spirit. That's a tough one. But if you see me when I'm taken away from you, then you will get what you have asked for. If you don't see me, you won't get it. Okay, but what exactly am I looking for? Suddenly, there appeared a chariot with horses made of fire. Ooh. Something like this, I should think. I see it. <gasps> Whoa. Oh! Goodbye, Elijah. You've always been a father to me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wow. Woo! It disappeared. It went into heaven, dude. On a big chariot. Oh, I'm going to honor him with a great piano piece. After Elijah had been taken up to heaven, Elisha used Elijah's coat to cross back over the Jordan River. When the group of 50 prophets waiting there saw Elisha crossing through the Jordan River on dry land, they knew Elisha had been given the spirit of Elijah. The end. Thanks for helping out, guys. Way to tell that story. Way to tell that Bible story. Kellen, you're amazing. Thank you for the encouragement. Hey, that's what friends do. It's true. 
That's what Elisha did for Elijah when he stayed with him right till the end. And what Elijah did for Elisha when he left to share of his spirit. And what God does for us when he gives us the Holy Spirit to help and encourage us through good times and bad. Great points, both of you, both of you. Now get out there and keep telling more Bible stories, Kellen. I will. Go, 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 go. Uh, oh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, here we go. Woo! You're good at that. Encouraging people? Thanks. Oh, that and yelling. Good. Then reveal the question! When has someone encouraged you? You encouraged me when I was learning how to juggle potatoes. That would have worked if you hadn't baked them first. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. And you encourage me every day. That's because you're the best. You are. You are. Talk about it together. Yeah. When has someone encouraged you? Yeah, we'll see you guys next time for a brand new song. song. I'm telling you, you are. You are. You're the best. Dar. Fader. <laughs> Dar. Fader. <laughs> Churl. <laughs> Lanthropist. <laughs> Lanthropist. The <laughs> lanthropist. Cla. Mms. Cla. Cla. P. Cla. And we're back. Can I have Esme again? Um, I forgot to tell you guys that I was not here last week, and I apologize for that. I just realized because I was going to talk about, oh, last week I said blah, 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 but that was actually two weeks ago. No worries. Miss Jessie just gets a wild hair to go retreat to the woods every once in a while, and that's what we did last weekend. We had a lot of fun. We picked some mushrooms. Yes. We did not eat them. Do not ever eat wild mushrooms, but it's fun to identify them, right? We found some rocks. What kind of rock did we find? Potaski stone. stone. It was on our summer bucket list and we found one. Boom. And we also found, what did we find on the beach? Sea glass. Sea glass on Lake Huron and some agate too and pink quartz. We found lots of cool stuff. Anyways, I just wanted to update you that I'm really sorry about last week. Just needed a little break in the woods and that's okay. You know, Jesus took a little break in the desert sometimes. So, um... If you need to take a break, you take a break, and I support that. But anyways, me and Esme are here right now. We are here. We're going to go over the memory verse together. Can I see this? Thank you. I'm just going to set it over here for now. <laughs> um, we're going to go over the memory verse, which I told you last week. I pointed out the, that there was actually, for the first time that I can remember, a pretty big difference between the NIV and the NIRV in the version. Um, the NIV... Uh, well, I'll do NIRV or NIV first. Is remember we're in Proverbs 17, 17. So can do you want to read it actually for me, Esme? We're seven, Proverbs 17. Let me find a little 17, 17. Can you read that for me loudly and clearly? A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. So that's what it says in my Bible, which was the NIV, and I think we said it was published in 2004. But the NIRV says, a friend loves at all times to help when trouble comes. And those two uh, chunks, those two verses sound pretty different, but they're actually the same. Um, and I, I just want to encourage you again, if you didn't catch the lesson two weeks ago, um, make sure that if you're ever reading your Bible and you're like, oh, I don't know if I quite understand that those words are a little confusing, look it up in a different version. Absolutely. I do that all the time. All right, so, but we're going to go over the N-I, little r, capital V together right now. And that is, a friend loves at all times. Can you say that? A friend loves at all, all times, times to help. To help. When trouble. When trouble. Comes. Comes. Proverbs. Proverbs 17, 17. 17, 17. <laughs> we like um there's a movie that we like and that's one of the songs in there they sing those words so let's let's read it together i'll point this little symbol means at okay i drew do you guys know what the at symbol looks like it's like an a with a circle around it and when i write at instead of writing the t it's just one extra letter miss jesse for some reason always makes the symbol 
Anyways. A, let's do it together, ready? A friend loves at all times to help when trouble comes. Proverbs 17, 17. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so that is our memory verse. Please send me a video of you doing it. You will get a treat for sure. Um, you can email it, you can text it, figure out a way. If you wanna knock on my door and I'll watch you through the window, that works too. But you will get a treat for doing your memory verse just like in real time, real life Kidopolis. Um, So we're gonna do our prayers and then we're gonna say goodbye until next week. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for another week. Thank you for the block party lesson that you have given us. Thank you for the so-and-so show and all the joy that they bring us and um, the, the experience of learning about you in just a joyful and fun way. That is so cool, God, um, that there are so many different ways to learn about you. And I thank you for that. I thank you that there's not one way to learn about you. There's so many different ways that we can learn about you. And I thank you that you've given us so many tools and so many options and so many ways to show your love and to act like your son. I appreciate you, Lord, in everything. And I appreciate the family that you've given me, not just the family in my house, but the family in my community that I get to help and that gets to help me. And Lord, I ask that you remind me, give me gentle reminders, treat others the way that I want to be treated and um, to recognize when people are treating me the way that they want to be treated. Um, and to just live joyfully and with love and to include everybody in that love. Everybody. Everybody deserves your love and everybody deserves my love. And uh, Lord, I ask that you help me keep in mind that everyone is invited to this party. Um, we love you, Lord. We pray this all in your son's name. Amen. So thank you so much for this week. Um, we will see you next week. It is still our block party. Should we like get a disco ball? Or something? I don't, I guess they don't have disco balls at block parties because they're usually outside. Yeah. Ooh, speaking of outside, we have a surprise coming up for you in two weeks. Is that right, Jacob? In two weeks. We have a special, repeat, like, repeat the words after me so it sounds like an echo. Uh, echo. Special! Special! Tie-dye! Tie-dye! Event! Event! In the church parking lot. Um, it's going to be super duper fun. Miss Jessie and Jacob and Esme and Jeff and Megan and the whole kit and caboodle gang. Miss Jen too, don't want to forget her. We're going to, we're going to have a really uh, cool t-shirt ready for you guys. You're going to get to um, design some of it yourself because it's tie-dye. That's in two weeks, which the date is October. I don't know the date. Fourth. Is it a Sunday? October 4th. We are going. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. It's going to be our special date. All right. So I'll see you next week here and in two weeks here and also two weeks in the church parking lot. See you later. I like your eyelashes. I like your nostrils. I like your teeth. I like your cheeks. I like your eyebrows. <laughs> I like your lips. I like the dark ring around your brown eyes. I like your ears. I like your earlobes. <laughs> <laughs>